Today, I show you how, how to use all of these functions down here. And actually, I've already shown you how to do the gears, but I'll show you how to do most of these. And then I kind of messed around at the end to make a new end stop for my 3D printer I'm building for the Z axis. It's probably not the final one I'm going to use, it's just one that I'm going to use temporary for now, just to build. Anyway, if you want to watch the whole thing, it's towards the end, but it's kind of boring, just let you know. <laughs> but if you want to watch, it's cool. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Kevin with Invents Mark back again. And today I really don't know what to show you. I think I'm just going to show you some random things because I really don't know <laughs> where you guys are at still. Um, just let me know where you guys need help with and stuff because... I'm willing to do whatever you guys need help with, even make stuff for you if you want. Just let me know in the comments, or you can message me on Twitter at, at Inventomar, or even my Reddit page that I had nothing really going on with that, but it's there. If you guys want to message me or on here in the comments down below, wherever you want to do, just go ahead. <laughs> but for today, I'm just going to show you a few things. I don't know if I've showed you the bolt function or not. It's part of the extra extra mesh devices. It's in the uh, user preferences. And you go to add mesh, and it's the bolt factory. Just check that, and extra objects is good. And there's also landscapes you can make, too. Just save that, and you have that option there, the bolt. And... You can make, it's metric only, I don't know if they'll ever put SAE bolt sizes in there or not, but you can kind of make a bolt that's similar and then size it slightly to adjust, but you can have different types of heads on it. You can put a Phillips on there, Allen wrench, none. You can make it a counterseek type bolt. So I don't know why the normals go backwards. Whenever it gets darker like that, it means the normals are inverted for some reason. You can have a dome type. The way you see these are like that. There's the cap type. Oh, that's really messed up. <laughs> Let's go back to M5. Cap with the Allen. That's the standard that I typically use most of the time. And you can make the bit depth whatever length you want. You can make the uh, size of that different depending on what size Allen wrench bolts you have. Change the head height, the diameter of it. Make the shank on there. Bigger, smaller, make some weird funky bolts, make the thread bigger. You can even make your own custom bolts on here. Make it smaller, change the pitch, make it more like a wood screw. Make it more like a lead screw. Like a ball groove type. Let's make that more like that. Or you can actually even just do a nut. This is the see the screw pitch changed on there, but the M10 nut. That's just a standard size. Whenever I'm making a spot for a nut, what I do is just create like the uh, that size and. Let's go like an M3 nut, shift A add, and turn these on. Every Blender tutorial I see, everybody starts doing stuff, then they turn that on later. It's just because <laughs> you're going along and you remember it as you're going. You kind of forget. Add a cylinder, change it to only six sides. From the top view with the graphic. And rotate 30 makes it the same as that. I just usually 
go just a little bit bigger than the size that I need. Then you can size the hole. Kind of the same length as a bolt or nut. That way you can use that as a boolean to take it out of something. Like a cube. If you watched any of my 3D printer build videos, I do this quite a bit. So you just take the main thing, do a boolean difference, cylinder, and just take it out of there, apply, delete the cylinder, and we got a spot for the nut to fit into. And on the other side, you put like a bolt or something, and just make a hole for it. That's the uh, bolt factory. It's kind of cool. You got other things in here like single vertex, round cube. It's basically just a kind of a UV. It's a, almost like a different type of sphere instead of an anchosphere or a UV sphere. It's a square sphere, but it's basically the same as creating a cube then adding a subsurf to it. It's basically the same exact thing. You can just do a shortcut and do round cube instead. Then you can do math function. You can do these or all kinds of different things. But you can put an equation in here if you know what the equation you want. Change that to a five. Let's see what it does. It does all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> if you know, if you're good with math and these kind of equations and shapes, it can actually work pretty good for you. But that's something I really don't know a whole lot about. And then there's the pipe joints. These are kind of cool. You add like a elbow joint. Make it as big as or small as you want. Make it as smooth as you want. Just want a hexagon pipe. You can change the angle on it. Make the one end bigger, smaller, and the other end bigger, smaller. And once you're done with it, you can actually do the solidify option and make it a solid object just change the thickness to whatever you want in there and then you have the basically a solid pipe that's solid all the way through there's other types of pipe joints too you got the T joint oops didn't mean to render it <laughs> wrong button you got the Y joint that one's kind of cool. You can change the different angles on it. Make all kinds of different stuff. Change the different arm lengths. And you got cross joint and this is there. An end joint, which is basically however many you want, you can add. Go crazy with it if you want. <laughs> you actually do quite a bit with that, actually. Just getting it to print, though, would be kind of difficult. So, what else we got here? Gears. I've shown how to do the gears. The worm gear. That one's kind of tricky to get. I haven't really worked it out. Where'd it go? <laughs> but I haven't really worked out how to get it to mesh with a regular gear yet because you can't really make the teeth any wider than they are. I don't know how to get that to get stronger or not. Because that's, that's the only downfall that I can see is the teeth just don't seem strong enough. That's pretty thin and then you try to print that out and it gets tricky there.
But yeah, that's the worm gear. And you got the Taurus objects. This is just like a regular Taurus, but it's all shifted. Change the size of it. Make it smoother. That's kind of a cool shape, though. I can't think of anything off the top of my head of what to do with it, but this is a super Taurus. I don't know what's different than the regular one. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Can make it kind of square. Oh, that's cool. See, I didn't. You just kind of got to play around with stuff and you find new, <laughs> new things. Well, that's pretty cool. Make it like a little beveled edge there. Huh. That's something I might be able to use. Then you got the. Uh, Actual extras here. We got diamonds. If you render it, you can add a material to it. Do that glass. Ends up looking like a diamond. This is just my default background that I have for natural lighting and looking at things. But that's the uh, brilliant diamond. Oops. Wrong button. <laughs> you got the uh, regular diamond that you can adjust. You can adjust all of these to however many segments you want. I don't know why they call it diamond, they should just call it gem because diamonds have a certain pattern typically. Then you got gem cuts like this though. You can change it however many segments you want and make it as crazy as you want. You got the star, I think I've shown this one. Pyramid, this one's kind of cool. Rotate it. You can change the number of sides. It's not really, well, kind of is a pyramid still, but add more steps, take away steps, make it bigger, make each step really low. Like this would be cool to make if you want to make a statue or something like that. Just make a base and use this to make an easy base for it. Or just a platform for something, I don't know. That's something that would be useful for. And you got the honeycomb. This one's actually kind of cool to make like a like a fan mount, like a filter or screen or something like that. Make it however big you want. You know, it's at least print though. And what, what you would do with it after, because it only does that, it doesn't do the thickness. I don't know why it does. But just select all and extract and you got a honeycomb there. print that out and you got just kind of a filter that you can use and you can boolean it to like a square shape or so you just have a thing or a circle and then print it out and you can have, make your own pan covers really easy with that teapot this one's just kind of a little blender thing Make it super high resolution. There's a teapot and a spoon. Now that I'm going over these extra objects, I think I've gone over these already. I don't know. 
I might have. And there's the Menger sponge. This thing, I really don't know what it is. It's some kind of math function. But each level you go, it makes it one side of the next one. I froze up my computer there for a second, though. I really confused it now. <laughs> I'll sink it away. Let's see, I think it's pretty big now. What size is that? It's really not that big. It's 52 millimeters. But that's pretty much all the extras there. Like armature, that's for like doing animation type stuff. Lattice just kind of makes an empty box for doing stuff with. I don't know. Just makes the wireframe basically. But that's pretty much that for the just random stuff. I think I'll show you. So I do need to make it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and open my 3D printer build and make an end stop for it because that's the uh, current end stop I made for the X and Y. I just printed out two of these just for a little switch to go in there. And I didn't really make these adjustable because they're not really going to need adjustment. For the Z one though is the one I'm going to make. It's going to need adjustment. So I'll unhide everything. I'm trying to think which one would be better to put the end stop on? Probably this one here. So that's the uh, new design that I came up with. And I actually think I got it working finally. Because I had it going and these were having a hard time because I had gears on here that weren't working very well. Because my printer is not, when it prints, it's not exactly round, so I had to measure it and then just get that measurement and then print out some gears that were perfectly round. And I had, it was like 0 0.9908 and then 0 0.9967 was the adjustments that I had to make on it to make it exactly round. And it actually printed out really well, but it's something I just haven't adjusted on my printer for a long time. and. Because that's something you need to adjust in the software. Or the firmware, actually. But I got that working, and I was running them in parallel, and it wasn't... It was just too weak, and it wouldn't turn the things. And So I actually wired the motors in serial. And it seems to be a lot more powerful. And it seems like it's go that's going to work. So I'm going to go, go ahead with those, and hopefully that works. So I got my new plate in there today, but... I'm thinking where to put the end stop really. I want to put it in a fixed location. Actually, I can use the new one that I built to duplicate that. So I printed that out in the Switches that I have fit perfectly in it, so. Why? So I'm gonna select these. That's what I'm gonna work with here. the 
and stop fixed on here. I make it adjustable though is the question. I could use just this box, but so I plan on doing is just glue it on there. Doesn't need to be that big either. Probably all the bigger it needs to be. I think what I could do is just duplicate this and just delete the inside faces. Select these lines and delete them. Oops. Now let's select these all. Create a face. Create a face. Now we have a solid object. I made that way more difficult than it needed to be, but it's already at an angle and just adding a cube. And then, to me, that's just easier than rotating it. <laughs> I don't know why, but it is. I can just glue that on there. Doesn't need to be that thick. which is going to be sticking out. That's what I can do. What I have on the other one, she can use an M4 bolt. With this, uh, setup that I have in this 3D printer build, I don't know why everything's just huge. I changed some settings somewhere and it just makes everything ginormous. Okay, so that's there. The switch actually goes over here, so what I'm going to do is These are going to be the holes that I'm going to take out of it. And join those together. That is named cylinder 15. It's the only problem when you have a lot of objects in one scene. You have to sit there and scroll, scroll, scroll. Why? Okay, so it's going to go into that. So that I'm just going to glue that onto the thing. I'll probably drill holes in this. Because this is... That would be a fine spot. Something I should have done when I made the object, but I didn't know how everything was going to work out until just recently. So, so I'll have that to screw into. And then I'm going to Duplicate that. How thick is this Z? I have at least three millimeters. Right, let's make it three and a half. So that way I can, instead of just having one to adjust, I'll have to have just two of them. 
and I can adjust that up and down. I don't know how well that's going to work though. Should be better if I move this. Oh, three. So that one and that one. Okay. So move these over here. I can actually move this over here. the end switches that I have, the end goes there, but the roller switch part goes right here. So that'll hit right about here on a nice flat spot. I should move that over even a little more. like up here this is probably just temporary and I'll probably build a different one later but for now this should work I probably should make something to kind of help this glue on a little bit better what I can do is just extrude a little face there. I hope it glue onto there. Then I can still adjust these without this being in the way. This doesn't need to be so thick either. Like that, like two. This says X right now, but the way it's rotated and everything from when it was created, it's different, so. And let's make this 2.75. If I can adjust this and just put it where I need to, because the roller bearing would be here. That's somewhere flat to push against. I don't even have the bed all the way together yet either, so but that should be good. I'll print those out and get everything all put together and see. Anyway, I think that's long enough for this video. Actually, it's probably way too long and probably not hardly anyone's watching now. <laughs> and who knows? Anyway, if you are, thanks. But oh well. Anyway, thanks for watching.